Greetings and welcome to the third lecture of this MOOC Introduction to Biorisk Management. In this lecture, I will introduce you to the biological agents and their categorization into risk groups. Biological agents include viruses, bacteria, fungi, yeast, parasites, toxins, and genetically modified organisms. All of these have a potential to cause harm in healthy human or animal subjects. As a biorisk manager, you must understand the microbiology and the epidemiology associated with biological agents. This will assist you in developing a risk mitigation strategy and ensuring the safety of laboratory personnel as well as the environment. The learning objectives of this particular lecture are to introduce you to the term biological agent, describe the categories of biological agents, explain the classification of biological agents into risk groups and elaborate upon specific epidemiological terms used to describe biological agents. The learning outcomes for this particular lecture are as follows. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to describe the various biological agents, classify biological agents into risk groups, apply specific regional criteria for the classification of biological agents, and describe specific epidemiological terms associated with biological agents and their transmission. The definition of biological agents has been adapted from EU Directive 2000-54-EC. Any microorganism, including those which may have been genetically modified, cell cultures and endoparasites which may be able to provoke any infection, allergy or toxicity in humans, animals or plants. This definition encompasses all of the living organisms which can be infected by biological agents. Viruses are infectious agents with a core that is composed of nucleic acids, which is RNA or DNA, that is encapsulated in a protein coat. The Baltimore scheme classifies viruses based on their nucleic acid composition and their mode of replication. The ability of viruses to mutate within the host is a cause for concern. Zoonotic viruses can be transmitted from animals to human host. Viruses can be transmitted via multiple routes, including aerosols. Some of the viruses which are of concern are the avian influenza viruses, the Ebola viruses, the coronaviruses, the human immunodeficiency virus, the dengue virus, West Nile virus and the rabies virus. You must be aware that some viruses need a vector or a host in order to replicate and transmit to the human host. Bacteria are commensal and symbiotic. Some bacteria are beneficial to human existence. For example, the bacterium which produces vitamin K in your gut is essential for you to produce the compounds that are involved in the clotting of blood. However, pathogenic bacteria which harbor specific genes encoding toxins can be harmful to human subjects. These include the bacteria which produce the cholera toxins and the Shiga toxins. One of the major causes for concern is the emergence of multi-drug resistant bacteria. These have emerged as a result of extensive use of antibiotics and other antimicrobial drugs. Nosocomial infections or hospital acquired infections are another cause for concern 
to bio-risk managers. And finally, spore-forming bacteria such as Bacillus and Thracis pose a risk in terms of their potential to be used as weapons in bioterrorism. The bacterial pathogens of concern are Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the causative agent for tuberculosis, Escherichia coli O157 H7, which is an enteric pathogen, Vibrio cholerae, which causes cholera, Helicobacter pylori, Pseudomonas arginosa, and Salmonella typhi. Many of these bacteria have developed resistance to multiple drugs. And this poses a challenge to clinicians as well as to bio-risk managers. Fungi, which can cause harm to healthy human subjects, include Aspergillus, Histoplasma, and Cryptococcus neoformans. Aspergillosis is a condition which is associated with immunocompromised individuals. Inhalation of the spores produced by aspergillus can cause infections in the lungs. Histoplasmosis is rare. However, the fungus histoplasma is associated with bird and bat droppings. And coming into contact with these droppings can result in the transmission of this particular fungus. Candidiasis is a fungal infection caused by a yeast called Candida. Candida auris is an emerging fungus that presents a serious global health threat as it is multi-drug resistant, difficult to identify using standard microbiological assays, and has caused outbreaks in healthcare settings. There are other biological agents. These include parasites, and they are a cause for concern, especially in facilities that conduct experiments with live animals. Biotoxins are poisons that are of plant or animal origin. These include ricin, saxitoxin, colchicin, and abrin. Prion diseases or transmissible spongiform and cephalopathies, TSEs, are a rare form of rare progressive neurodegenerative disorder that affect both humans and animals. The World Health Organization has categorized biological agents into risk groups. Let us look at the four risk groups. Biological agents belonging to risk group one have a low individual risk and a low community risk. Microorganisms that are unlikely to cause human or animal disease are categorized under risk group one. Risk group two comprises biological agents that pose a moderate individual risk and a low community risk. Pathogens that can cause human or animal disease but are unlikely to be a serious hazard to laboratory workers the community, livestock, or the environment are categorized under risk group two. Laboratory exposures to risk group two biological agents may cause severe infection. However, effective treatment and preventive measures are available and the risk of spread of infection is limited or can be contained. Biological agents belonging to risk group 3 pose a high risk to the individual. However, the risk of transmission to the community is low. Risk group 3 pathogens cause serious human or animal disease, but do not ordinarily spread from one infected individual to another. 
effective treatment and preventive measures are available. Risk group 4 poses the highest individual risk and the highest community risk. A pathogen that usually causes serious human or animal disease and that can be readily transmitted from one individual to another directly or indirectly is categorized under risk group 4. Effective treatment and preventive measures are not usually available. This risk group includes respiratory viruses, which pose a high individual risk and a high community risk. If vaccines and other therapeutic measures are not available to contain a specific biological agent, it must be categorized as risk group 4. In addition to the risk groups, regional factors may influence the classification of a biological agent into distinct risk groups. For instance, viruses and bacteria may evolve certain unique traits such as pathogenicity based on region specifics determinants. The mode of transmission is another factor which must be considered from region to region. For instance, if a parasite that is transmitted by mosquitoes is not in a region where mosquitoes are present, that particular parasite cannot be transmitted by the vector. In addition to this, factors such as the local immunity patterns, the density of the population, the mobility or the movement of population, the presence of vectors and other environmental factors must be taken into account when developing your risk management strategy. Two more factors which need to be concerned or considered are the availability of effective preventive measures as well as the local availability of effective treatment. Routes of transmission. There are six basic routes of transmission. The first route of transmission involves direct contact with tissues or fluids from infected individuals. The second route of transmission relies on formites. Formites are inanimate objects contaminated by an in infected individual. These can include surfaces such as doorknobs, toilet seats, tables, and other surfaces which have the potential to attract pathogens. The third route of transmission is via aerosols. Pathogens can be transmitted via very small particles or droplet nuclei, as in the case of respiratory viruses. The fourth route of transmission is the oral route. Pathogenic organisms are transmitted via foods which we consume and this enter the digestive system and can cause diseases and other conditions which can be fatal to human subjects. The fifth route of transmission is the vector bone route. These include living organisms that can transfer pathogens. And finally, zoonotic pathogens can be transmitted from animals to human hosts. These are the six basic routes of transmission for biological agents. Another term which is commonly used in biorisk management is the portal of entry. 
The portal of entry refers to the manner in which a pathogen enters a susceptible host. These can include the respiratory route, the fecal oral route, the ocular conjunctival route, the cutaneous route, the percutaneous route, and the mucous membranes. This module has introduced you to the following concepts and terminology which will be pertinent to your role in a biosafety laboratory. Biological agents, risk groups, route of transmission, and portal of entry. To summarize, I would like to inform you that as a biosafety officer or a biorisk manager, it is essential that you understand biological agents. The understanding of biological agents in terms of their life cycle, their pathogenicity, their mode of transmission, and other factors is critical to the development of a thorough biorisk management strategy. Thank you for participating in this lecture. Stay biosafe.